and welcome back to the channel. I hope that everybody is doing well. I'm in my kids pickup line. I like to take these moments to make videos because I will be waiting here for another 20 minutes. <laughs> Jackson is like KO'd in the back seat. I keep pushing his head back and then he keeps dropping it forward. He's like so asleep. Um, so I thought I, you know, I might as well take the opportunity to hop on here and make a video. I've been making a list of topics that I want to talk about with you guys. I have so many ideas. I, there's literally not enough time in the day to keep up with all of my ideas and all of my interests and my hobbies. It's just overwhelming sometimes. But I've been making a list of videos that I want to make and one of them I can do in this type of setting is discussing how I was successful in FNP school, what I did to be successful in my studying and in my learning. So I'm just going to kind of go over some tips I have for you guys, what I did and what I think ultimately helped me be successful in my program. So number one, and this is huge, I would really recommend that with each class you read the syllabus thoroughly. Really comb through your syllabus. Write down any test dates, any due dates for any assignments in a planner and I even recommend that you color code your planner based on different classes. But definitely read through, comb through that syllabus and get to know what your professor is expecting of you. So yes, obviously writing due dates in your planner is so important so you don't miss anything and that's huge, but also reading through the syllabus to get an idea of what your professor is expecting of you for the semester and what is not expected of you as well. And so just for like a quick example, um, when I was in school, we used eMedley for charting on our patients during clinicals all the time. You may or may not be familiar with it. Um, it might be coming up in your program, depending on where you are in your program. But that was the charting system that we used for when we would see patients during our clinical year. And I'll be honest, I did not read the syllabus apparently thoroughly enough. And so I was really over charting. I was doing like a full HPI review system exam, um, diagnosis, treatment plan on all of the patients that I was seeing probably for almost my first semester of clinicals. And come to find out that was way more than was expected of me. Really all that they wanted was like a couple diagnoses and like demographics and stuff. Um, so I was really overdoing it and had I like taken my time and read more thoroughly through the syllabus I would have caught that and not been doing more work than was expected of me and you know Lord knows that You don't have time to be doing more work than needed in the program Especially if you're working so just really read through thoroughly figure out what texts that they require for you to have A lot of times they might tell you like where they get their testing questions from whether it be their PowerPoint presentations or the textbook or both they usually will either put it in the syllabus or tell you um, where they get a lot of their test bank questions from. And then obviously, like I said, you'll find out what's expected of you from your professor, what's not expected of you, and the due dates, because you obviously do not want to miss any due dates. That being said, I think if you do miss a due date for whatever reason, don't write that off as a zero. Obviously, try and email your professor and see that you can't at least get partial credit for your assignment, if not full credit, and just let them know your situation. Never, never don't try. I don't know if that makes sense, but you know what I mean? Like, write your professor and try. That's kind of off topic, but... So, one, read through your syllabus and correlate it with a planner. Make sure that that planner is something that you can have on you, like, at all times. Because that is what the rest of your life is tailored around because this should be most important right now obviously if you're a parent it's different that is also always going to be number one right but that being said hopefully otherwise you can make your program number one in your life with social events or with family or with work really because this is a huge career goal and a lot of money that you're investing and a lot of time that you're investing so this really should be the center of your world for the next two years um, so make sure that you have that planner on you and that you're using it, you're referencing it, you're checking it daily um, to make sure that you're not missing anything and that you're not taking on more than you can chew. That was something that I was very, very adamant about during my program was always checking my planner and making sure that I wasn't missing dates. I would say almost to like an obsessive um level because I was always always worried that I was going to miss a deadline or a due date so I mean hopefully you're not that extreme but I do think that it's really important to stay on top of your dates and do every now and then check online to make sure there have been no changes to any due dates okay. all right so next up how did I 
help myself to retain the information that I was learning. So right away, my professors pretty much told me that a lot of what they tested from was in fact from their lectures. And so I knew that I was going to heavily focus my attention on their lecture material. And so what I would do to help myself to retain and learn and really grasp the info was I found ways to present the material to myself in like multiple different formats. So initially, the first thing that I always would do was I would listen to the professor's lecture in the most calm, relaxed manner. So a lot of times what that meant for me was I just listened to it while I was commuting to work or commuting to drop my kids off. My kids got to listen to a lot of lecture, let me tell you. But um, yeah, I would listen to it in a very calm setting. I wasn't taking notes. I wasn't you know, flipping through a textbook and reading. I was just listening and absorbing the material. And honestly, this is probably some of the points where I really learned the most because I just didn't have this level of pressure on myself to understand what was being taught to me. And so I would listen to it first in that type of setting, whether it be commuting, whether it be while I was working out, whether it be if I put headphones in and I was cooking dinner and I was listening to it in that way. Um, sometimes I'd even like go stroll Target with like my headphones in my ear and just listen to the lecture. Try to find a setting in which you're not scrolling through your phone or sitting on your computer, not necessarily be sitting in front of a book and at a desk but obviously you don't want to have too much input coming in that it's a waste of time to be listening to the material. But I found that I could grasp and listen to the info just while commuting, like I said, while working out, while making dinner, just these like leisurely activities, but I wasn't taking notes. Now, second time around, I because this I didn't obviously listen to the lectures one time, listened many, many times. So that would be my first go around with my professor's lecture. And then I would actually sit down and prepare to take notes the second time that I would listen to the lecture. And this time I would actually print out the PowerPoints that the provider, um, not the provider, the professor provided to complement her lecture or his lecture. And so I would print those out and I would make sure that there were ample space to take notes. And then I would highlight material, those areas that I knew I needed extra work with. And then obviously I'd go back through my notes and I look through what I highlighted and I would find another resource to research more. So whether it be the textbook that was accompanied the class, but I'll be completely honest with you in all of the classes that I took, I really used mostly my provider, or not my provider, huh? my professor's lectures and up to date and YouTube actually. That's how I ended up on YouTube because I'm a very hands-on learner. And so when I can't have a setting and where I can learn hands-on, then I need visuals. And so YouTube has so many great channels that I would use. I can't think of the names off the top of my head, but I'll put some, maybe I'll like link some in the comments below if you're curious to see some of my favorite channels that I was using for study purposes. Because like I said, I'm a visual learner and that just was another great way to get the information into my brain. On the topic of YouTube, because I did use that resource a lot for learning, and that's how I obviously got into creating my own channel. So the whole idea behind this was if I could learn material well enough that I could teach it, then I would really understand it. And that's, I mean, that's true with any subject. If you are able to teach someone else the material from like a foundational level, then you really have a good grasp on the concept. So if there are topics that you find particularly difficult for you, make the goal to be able to teach it to somebody else. So have like a loved one or a family member or a friend or someone and say like you're struggling with oh God, um, acute otitis media, just something that's happening here. And find a way to explain it diagnose it, treat it, teach this to somebody else and see that you don't begin to have a deeper level of understanding of whatever. I don't know if that was a great example. That was something that I used so much was teaching and my husband, God bless him, fell uh, victim to this quite often. I mean, that in a, in a nutshell is what I did to be successful in my program. That being said, I mean, at this level, you definitely have to be very self-disciplined. Obviously you have to want it. There's other, otherwise there's no reason. I'm still thankful that I did um, continue my education. I feel like it's opened up a lot of doors for me. If I ever wanted to do bedside nursing again, if I lost my mind in any regard, you know, then I could go back. <laughs> but <laughs> 
Um, and I will always be a nurse at heart, but bedside nursing is so hard. It's weird because I still have these moments where I'm like, kind of miss being a nurse. But you know, then I come back to sanity. Anyway, totally off, off topic and kind of going on a tangent. What I was saying was, obviously you have to be self-disciplined. No one's going to force you to do the work you have to want to do it. You're a grown up, you're an adult, this is your career, this is your choice to go on and further your education and do this program. And it's not without hard, like there's no quick, easy answers. It takes hard work, it takes a lot of studying. I didn't, I don't have any quick answers. I studied a ton. That being said, I am a firm believer in that if you put in the work that you can definitely do it. So with that, Go ahead and leave any comments or questions you have down below. Hopefully I gave you a good idea of what I did to be successful. If you want more specifics, then ask me and I'll answer them. Um, but I tried to cover what I, like the, the basis of what I did to be successful in my program. Anyways, I wish you guys the best. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. And until next time, I wish you guys nothing but the best and I'll talk to you soon.